What's up? Man, what's up with you? I'm trying to do any and everything an entrepreneur knows how to do. <laughs> yeah, you're getting your nose into everything, aren't you? Right, yeah, trying to. <laughs> Man, it's been eight years since the last time I talked with you. What have you been up to over the past it, eight years? I, I think we've texted a little, but yeah, that's probably about right. Um because I think you relocated, is that right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm still in Charlotte. It's just that uh, you know, I my goal was to jump into uh, podcasting and to make it. Uh, you know, when when I when I first met you in 2015, podcasting was that thing that everybody said, "Oh, it's just a hobby." Look at where it's grown right. now. Now it's it's the deal, right? Absolutely. <laughs> well, and your music is the deal too. Look at Tiny Towns, dude. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, I got another one coming in the next week or two. Um, it's part of an album, so we're just going to kind of, you know, obviously like everybody does, we drop singles until whatever's going to happen. You know, either we put them all on an album or we reveal an EP or wh whatever it's going to be, but this is a full album, so we won't release every song as a single. You know, that that's not typically a plan. So that way when the album's out, there's something on there that nobody's heard yet. I'm starting to see a, a new trend when it comes to uh, listening to music. And the, the younger generations aren't really interested in the streaming. What they want to do is they want to collect the albums and the CDs. And I think it, what they're yearning for that opportunity to have an escape, a full escape for 35 to 50 minutes. Right. Yeah, I see that. Um, I also see a short attention span when they are using yeah. any type of digital media, uh, TikToks. I mean, they're just constantly thumbing that thing, man. They're just, <laughs> you know, um, just getting through it. But, yeah, I, the whole, like, the vinyl thing's coming back. Uh, people are looking for the full album experience, I think. And, and you see a lot of the big labels doing packages with, you know, bigger artists. Like, where if you buy the album, you get a T-shirt and a koozie, and, or you might get a VIP experience yeah. or a concert. Or, you know, there's all these things to interact and get them involved with the, with the full project. So that's, I think that's cool. Cause like I've always hated the idea of let's go record one song and put it out and, and, you know, come up with this plan to push it and do this. And then when it's done, like if nothing happened, then you go to the next thing. But then, you know, most, especially these young ones, like they may be so distraught from nothing happening thing. Mm -hmm. They're going to blow up. Cause that's the, that's the mental idea that everybody thinks and wants, but, you know, so, sometimes it can be I guess infuriating <laughs> in, in a way but at the same time so anyway I've recorded this album during COVID and now it's you know so I've, I've actually had quite a bit of time to put these put this thing out mm -hmm. so it's, it's it's been good for me because when the scene was dead now it's just time now this now is the time I, I'm with where I'm comfortable working with uh, smaller label and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, one of the things that happened during the lockdown, uh, a lot of listeners don't understand this, but the uh, during the lockdown, I was blessed with the opportunity to talk with singer songwriters around the world and and what they mm -hmm. mentally went through. Because, dude, we lost everything. I mean, I mean, even my performances, oh, yeah. it, it was all gone. What were we going to do? There was this mis mysterious thing that was going on. And what I love about what what you guys have done as songwriters is that you did lock down and you still became creative. And I've heard the stories of, well, you know what, this is probably the the greatest project I've done because I had the time. Right, it, it, very true. That's the same for me. Um, this the, the album that I'm planning by the end of the year for it to be out. Um, you know, all these songs came. I say all, minus one or two or three. You know, but the majority of this album came from COVID. It was written while we were stuck at home. You know, and some a lot of it was solo or i'd bring or i'd start it and bring it to a writing room and finish it with co-writers or whatnot but um i think there's only one song on the whole album that i wasn't a part of writing wow wow, wow. so out of out of 13 13 songs you know the the song Tiny Towns is so relatable right now because I don't know if you've you've seen the the influx of people on the move. I mean, people are moving from California, they're moving from New York, they're they're moving oh, from yeah. Miami and they're coming to these small towns and your your song fits right into their new lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um that song also is the theme song for a new TV show on the Outdoor really? Channel. Really? Yeah, it's the show's called Renovation Hunters. Uh it's basically house flipping but they're flipping uh, cabin getaway, like vacation <laughs> family getaways. So the whole idea is to bring the family oriented thing back to the kitchen table type deal. And they're flipping their house basically. And that's, you know, when the show comes on, that's, that's the theme song and it's, it's not supposed to leave. So it'll be the, and, and they, they're, 
Um, just mutual friends over the years, man. Um, I got people on the TV, NASCAR side, hunting the hunting industry and stuff like that. And, um, you know, stay connected and whatnot. And I actually went out for the show. So part of the show, they have, uh, they'll have an artist. They're tied in with Nashville and they have up and comers and they've had others that the guy calls me and asked me if I could come perform on the show because they have a segment in the show where they, when they do the reveal or they have a get together or whatnot with the family, um, they have an artist play for them. That's cool. So they brought my whole band in and we recorded. And I was on the first season. I'm now on the second season. We've already recorded that. I think second season starts to fall. Um, and then while I was there for that recording, now the show hadn't aired yet, mind you, on the first season when we go the first time. And we get done with everything and, and I'm talking to Hal and, um, he, he asked me about, you know, hey, man, I need a theme song. So we start talking about this and that, <laughs> what, how I can write it for him. And I go, well, dude, I've got a whole album done. I said, actually, there's two songs on this album that might fit. And they ended up picking Tiny Towns as it. He's like, this is it, man. And he's like, I already see the intro. Like, we already got footage for this. I mean, we can, this is it. So, wow. Um, Wow. That's how that was born. So, wow. Let's let's talk a little bit about reality since we've been talking about the business side of music and and one of the things that I'm finding a lot of interest in the world of AIs. How are you protecting your voice, your songwriting skills? Because I mean, look, they they copied Drake's voice, and now Paul McCartney is working with John Lennon's voice, and we're supposed to accept that. Yeah, I saw it come a long time ago. Actually, I've always said, you know, eventually especially when streaming started taking over so much. And I was like, man, one day we're not going to have to write a song and we're not going to have to sing it. They're just going to let a computer do it. Yep. <laughs> you know, like I've always thought that back in mind. Now it's here. Um, I still think like everything else, and it's been proven even prior to where technology is now that, you know, there's nothing like the human brain. So, I mean, there's, it's always going to, I mean, it was obviously, yeah, it was created by us. I think it's something that the industry it may or may i don't think it'll ever go away from people actually doing i think mm -hmm. it'll be a combination um i don't know if the industry so much will let that happen because for one you know the label could run totally run off ai you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. but it's kind of like when let's just use i don't do this but let's use politics when people go well <laughs> when the government pisses off enough of America, they'll turn on a government, you know? <laughs> yeah. So if you piss off all the artists, they're going to turn on the label. You, know? so, um, you know, I think it's, you know, one of those things where, yeah, it's going to be introduced. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. People are going to be involved. They're going to like it, especially the younger cats. Like there's all these singing apps now mm -hmm. where you can go on and like correct your voice. Like, you know how hard that was whenever for that to happen, whenever I first started, like, it was just auto tune in a studio. You couldn't get it that simple at home, yeah. you know. Like, so I mean, and, and everybody has pitch correction. It's part of it. It's just part, been part of the industry for a long time now. But now they can literally do it on their cell phone. Jeez. And like, I mean, half of these music videos we're we're doing anymore, man. Like, yep. yeah, the high dollar cameras are there, but fifty percent of it's shot on an iPhone. <laughs> you know, they're now dedicated to the shoot, so like, they're not taking phone calls on. They've got a phone dedicated that they bought for shooting with but it's still a phone you know like yep. it's like man so it's just it's rapidly changing it's, it's really crazy to see i mean i think it's cool i mean i'm not gonna stop the way i'm doing it yeah. so to me that itself creates the organic fan base that never leaves ai feels i feel like it can be very much like one minute you can be visible seen heard and the next minute you could be gone yep Yep. You know, just it's that simple because the attention span so just gone. People don't like when you look at the viewing time of the, on, on analytics of when I look at myself, I'm like, wow, like nobody watches very long. You know, I mean, it counts for review, but it's like they didn't watch the whole. They didn't get to the best part. You know, <laughs> like, so you got to like feed them that first. You know, it seems like it's just crazy um, how things are going do you think that's going to affect the length of a, of, a, of a great song because I mean you're right about that about TikTok people I mean even as, as a mobile entertainer people will hear like a minute and a half of a song and they'll come up to me and say get out of this I'm done with this one come on you gotta move forward yeah. get to the next song yeah for sure um, I think a great song is a great song so mm -hmm. you know those songs will always last always be around um 
the singing shows to me is, is part of what's happening. You know, like whenever an artist is going to be discovered nowadays, if they're not already known, you know, everybody wants to hear them sing something they know. Yeah. So what do they pick? They pick a great song. They pick a known song. Um, and then that they then become something once they have that brand and that fan base there, then they create, you know, typically a labels involved. Somebody's involved other than just that person or that artist or songwriter to help them, you know, help direct them in a, in a way to become their own thing. Um, I feel like, you know, I think AI is really new to, you know, I don't know that it's can be considered like the new thing it's so new you know i mean mm -hmm. i think people like the connection because if you look at it this way live the live scene has really opened back up yes from it what is. it was yeah people want to go to shows and they can't you know they're not going to watch a robot now granted there's technology out there that can create like somebody on stage fake at a cgi you know <laughs> like, <laughs> but i think that people still want to connect with people you know so you know, I feel like it's it's always going to be there. It's maybe just going to be a community or something, you know. You're you know? so right about that when it comes to live music because our Harris Teeter has live music every Thursday night. Yeah, yeah, they, they hit me. The Harris Teeter is around Charlotte constantly send me stuff. Um, and usually I've just never been able to do it. And then, and then it just kind of got to where... I was doing other things, you know, but yeah, it's crazy. Like the grocery store, you got a, you got a live <laughs> guy playing music in there and you can go sit at their bar and drink a beer That's it. and then go shopping. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Make it home before curfew. <laughs> what do you like more, the live performance or the creation of a new song? I think I like both. Yeah. Um, the creation part is pro to me, the most intriguing is you get the most, for me, you get the most out of it. I mean, you hear it all the time. So all writers go, well, these are my babies. And it's 100% because I have both. I've got songs and kids. So it's very much <laughs> a very familiar feeling when you write a song, create it. It goes from me and a guitar or somebody in a piano, however they start the thing, to bring it into a studio and it becomes what it becomes. You know, um, yeah, that's probably more fulfilling but at the same time, after I've heard it 3,000 times, I'd rather just go play a show. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's both. Where can people go to find out more about you, about this new album, and give you some love? Because I'm sure you've got merchandise, dude. Yeah, man. So matttuckermusic.com is my website. Um, that's the, the, the easiest way to get me. All the links for socials are there. And then I'm on pretty much every platform there that's out there. And, and if not... If somebody wants me to get on one that I don't know about, shoot me a message somewhere. <laughs> There's a contact link on my website, you know. So that's probably the easiest way. Excellent. Well, dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, especially when you release that brand new song. I want I want to be talking to you about it. Let's break it down. For sure. Yeah, man. So we should get together with the next week or so. July seventh is uh, pre saves. Isn't that crazy? We say pre saves now instead of pre sales. <laughs> um, pre saves are July seventh, July fourteenth are stream it's is what i call it you know oh. or downloads hey listen if here's the crazy thing that so when i first started we were still doing cds obviously oh, yeah. And, yeah. and the streaming thing hadn't really busted in yet but when it did um downloads were you had to download it there was no streaming service right you had to download the song digitally mm -hmm. so and that's how artists charted like on itunes it it, it it's not as hard to do anymore because most people stream so if I can get everyone to download Honky Tonkin' All Night, that's the name of the song, Honky Tonkin' All Night. It's a 90s-driven sound with a modern twist, Ooh. and it's, we've got a line dance to it. It's going to be a cool video coming with it. Um, but if we get everybody to download it on Apple and help me chart on Apple, that's bigger than anything right now. And it only takes a few hundred to, to get charted with, like, Luke Combs, Jelly Roll, Cody Johnson, it's not hard. So if everybody downloads the song, that's even better. But if not, just stream it. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you talked about that there, there's a line dance to it. So that means that are you going to go over to Coyote Joe's and teach that monkey? I am. I'm am, uh, been plugging this bug in their ear. So because that's huge for them over there, and I know all those guys. Yeah. Um, the band, the staff, everybody there. Um, I've played there quite a few times over the years. So yeah. I hope I'm really pushing to get that added to their repertoire. Um, 
the new DJ there, he's all over TikTok constantly and posting about their line dances. So we, uh, that's, that's a definitely a goal. I want this to, I'd love, I'd love for it to be that whole, you remember Alan Jackson did the video of the world's largest line dance yep. to, to the song. I believe the song was good time. It's got that vibe for sure. So, um, Maybe we can be the next line dance. There you go, man. Well, you have yourself a brilliant day today, okay, Matt? You as well, buddy. I appreciate it. It was great talking.